missing key parts in defence. They're horrid in attack. They have a ruck deficiency and they are unreliable around the ball in a manner that you don't expect the Swans to be. And that's just for starters. <laughs> they've, got, they've got trouble everywhere. I mean, you, anyone ring up champion data and gets the stats, they're, they're ranked really, really highly. So when you watch a game, like you watch the Fremantle, we'll talk about Fremantle another time this week, but when you're watching the game, I, I was looking at the midfield, you know, Chad Warner, and, and they had control at times, but generally... They couldn't find. They couldn't find the ball, mate. No, no. Uh, like, only for sort of ten minutes bursts to yeah. keep themselves alive. It was it quite just, pathetic. It before really you was. go any further, it gets worse tonight. They're, they're not getting any stock standard injuries at the moment. So Callum Mills comes back as at least a month with the calf injury, and Logan McDonald is up to two months with a significant medial ankle sprain. Medial no, ankle that, sprain that would be. <laughs> Adam Simpson be sitting at home saying, "Welcome, welcome to the class." Yeah. John Worsfold. So you, it goes through their midfield. Now, Warner, Parker. Um, Mills got hurt really early on the weekend, so he was out of the contest. Uh, Ray Botham, you know, really, really good player. Um, Goulden's flying. What is going on in the middle? Hickey's, we've seen Hickey pick up that team and carry it over the line. And Sean Darcy treated him like a 12-year-old boy on the weekend. And let him... Not, and let him but Hickey's been a really good player. That... I think the Swans' bloods and all that sort of stuff, it, it, it courses through the midfield. And they were, they were horrible in the weekend. And then you throw in, well, they've got defensive problems. They've got offensive problems. I mean, who are they kicking the ball? Who's marking the ball? Sam Reed's been announced he's out for the year. But he can't touch it. Um, everywhere you look, Jared, there's more than spot fires. There's, um, there's little, little raging bushfires. Yeah, so there is a, a recent history across the past 15 years or so of teams who have been annihilated in grand finals and not come up the next year. Do you, do you, do you, what, what is your, where's your position on that? Because the history tells us that's the, yes, it, that happens. Yes, it, it is. The, the journey of the runner-up is a hard one yeah. in, in recent times. And, you know, you can pick Adelaide's deterioration to beyond their grand final. The numbers weren't as heavy but the toll of it was. Is West Coast. Port Adelaide and yeah. After so they won it, sorry, not West Coast. That, I, that, I guess that's the intangible, isn't it? There, there's, they don't believe at the moment and part of that I think is when you are missing both McCartans and Rampy down back. I think that has filtered through. They had one heroic night against a similarly undermanned Richmond at Adelaide Oval, but the rest of the time they've coughed up leads that they shouldn't have done mm. twice at home, so they've mm. been unreliable when they've had that part of it under control, and then they've just been soundly beaten. They, they were soundly beaten. Yeah, they that. were. And their good players aren't playing well. No. Probably got better as the game come along. Oh, Zach Kenny's not the player. He was all Australian, I think, last year. They're, just, they're, they're in a team slump. And they're in individual slumps and the combination of both. And this has just been going on for... This is not happening in the last couple of weeks. This has been going on for about five weeks Oh, now. yeah, they got two soft kills at the start, which I think most of us held on. Yeah, no, no, let's wait to see the real games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they just haven't stacked up over a, over a decent... Bit. That's a six-week, seven-week patch, isn't it? John, John, um, John Longmire has shown that he can rescue a team. Remember when they were zipping yeah. six? he's rescued them a couple of times. And you think, God, how in the hell is this team going to get back? And they had come back and played finals. But This would be his best Houdini act. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. They've got a couple of wins on the board. They've got some talent there. They've got to get some players back. But they've just got to find some resolve that we typically expect to, to see from Sydney yep. week in, week out. Buddy Franklin? So... Oh, I'm happy to say I never get squeamish about our champion footballers if they have played just a fraction too long because in the course of things, we don't fixate on this. It's a bit awkward to live It, it is awkward. It is awkward. Because, you know, I mean, his moment... He's clearly feeling a level of anxiety. That was there in the moment that Tony blew at the top of the square and his reaction to that. And then he knows there's that moment in the last quarter where he just can't bend down to the ball anymore, which is totally understandable for a player about to reach his 350th game. And maybe maybe he has played one too many. I'm going to be OK with this. Yeah, so here. am I. So am I. But <clears throat> no-one's kicking Buddy out the door. No-one is. But Buddy is in... 
the leanest patch since his first year in football in 2005. 2005! This guy has been, he's going to be a future legend, we know that. He's been the most dynamic player to play our sport consistently this century. Everyone loves Buddy. Everyone. And it's really sad. And Derma commentated the game for Fox on, 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 on Saturday afternoon. So I, I, I rang Dermot Sunday morning. I said, hey, how are you feeling about this? He said, it's a, it's a little bit sad, isn't it? And it is sad. It's terrible when we see the greats of the game, their, their physical prowess doesn't allow them to be the player yeah. they were. So from a team perspective, the most important thing, he's not keeping anyone out. Amati's long-term injured, McDonald's long-term mm -hmm. injured, and McLean's just not quite good enough. Nope. So they actually need him to be there structurally. Yeah. And I still think there'll be three moments over the course of the rest of the year where we'll go, well, I'm glad so. he's out there. Well, I hope he kicks eight versus North Melbourne. And when I saw of North Melbourne on the weekend, he could kick 13 to, say, bring Hutto back to the conversation. He, he could. And I hope he does. But, God, it's, it's a slog. It's, it's a slog, Jared. I, I, it wouldn't worry me if he decided to retire mid-year. I'd clap as loudly as anyone yeah. else and say, hey, you've just been so great for our game.